This is the Kuretake Zig Writer, and it probably is my favorite marker. It's the one that I always have one with me, and it truly is double the pleasure, double the fun, double the creativity all in one. It is double-ended, and you'll notice that there are pictures on the side of the barrel that tell you this is a .5 and this is a 1.2, and they're both bullet points. The fine end of the marker is denoted by these grooves in the barrel, which is just a great way to be able to pick up a pen quickly, feel those or see those, and then open up to that end of the marker. Um, something that we haven't talked about is the caps are ventilated so that um, they do not provide a choking hazard. That, um, but that makes it so that you want to make sure that your caps are snapped on tight um, at the end. Because it is a double-ended marker, it's best to store them horizontally so that you have access to both sides of the barrel. And all of the characteristics of it are that they're acid-free, archival quality, light fast, waterproof, fade proof, and they are a water-based pigment ink, meaning that when they are dry, they will, they will work um, and stay where they are. Some of the fun things that you can do with lettering is one, to remember that your letters are made up of lines and circles. And so if we are going to write, we're going to write with the fine end of the marker first here. And we can come along and just simply say to yourself, okay, it is a, um, a straight line or a curved line on your circles. You'll come around and really have a lot of fun just playing with them. Now, lettering, this is sans serif at the moment, but adding a serif onto the end of it, a perfect serif to make with the writer, is you'll flip over to the large end of the writer, and then you're going to just simply take it and push and pull at the beginning and ending of every letter. And it just makes a perfect dot lettering. So what simpler way can you have than just a fun dot on the other end? The other great part about these markers is that they retain their shape and they will not get any of those little feelers off the end of them. They really um, have a lot of fun that way with them. Um, when you're lettering, if you try and write in this perfectly straight line and you don't have lines, then you either end up going uphill or downhill. So one of my tricks is that um, these are the zig memory system and so hey, why don't we just zigzag our letters? So you do your first letter and then you come about a half step down, come up, down, up, down, and then it makes it a lot of fun. So again, we can do a, a different type of letter ending with this. We can come back and just do a straight line with on the ends of the letters. So there's so many different types of lettering styles that you can do in letter endings and doodles. They are just the best marker for that. The other thing that you can do is to tilt your letters back and forth. So here we've, we've taken it, we've tilted it back and forth so that, again, they're going to look creative rather than crooked um, as you do them. So you can just write with them. Here we're writing with the large end and going back and forth. Now if I wanted to add dots onto the end of this, if I just push it, it's not going to show up. So you actually have to draw the dots on the end. But again, it's a bullet, nice bullet point so you can get those letters and the letter endings done so nicely. Again, you can flip to maybe if we just want to do straight lines or we can do flip over to the skinny end and do a couple line, a couple of different lines. So, and you can match your lettering to what you're writing. Um, we could do hearts. If it were Valent around Valentine's Day, we can put hearts on the ends of our letters. We could do little asterisks that look like snowflakes. So there's a, a lot of different letter endings that you can do and be able to have a lot of fun. Then the other thing that they're wonderful for is, again, borders. You can just do a, a simple squiggly line coming along. And it just provides a great framing for what you're doing. You could also come back and just do stitch lines. 
So lots of lots of fun options that you can do with your this writer. Again, double the pleasure, double the fun, double the creativity all in one. The writer comes in 12 different colors and is a, a great marker that way. So here we have um, an example of dot lettering that's done with the large end and written on it. Then we've used a smaller end. So what, when you're trying to focus on something or um, change it up, it's great to have it be double-ended and you can use it both ways. And again, a little pocket to be able to put a little treat in for a birthday card. So making your own cards and then, and then copying them off is a great way to do a project and have it be fun for that. So lettering our envelopes is another fun thing to do. So because the name of the person that you're addressing it to is so important, then it's nice to be able to do it with the large end of the marker. And again, if you kind of zigzag back and forth, you can do that. And then flip over to the skinny end of the marker. We'll do um, a anywhere place. But as we do that, and then we could come back and do some um, fun things that way as far as doodles that we can do. I always like to make some designs around the outside of the um, envelope. So a fun one is just to come and make clouds. And again, you're just being creative. And you can add some, again, some doodles. These are the best doodle markers. And because you can flip around back and forth between the, do the two ends, it's, um, it's nice, you just have access to both a large bullet point and a small bullet point all in one, um, one marker. The other fun thing that it's fun to do is to um, add your cursive with your printing. So here we've done the um, lettering of the surprise in a cursive and then come back with the fine end and just done reg regular printing and go back and forth. So what, what you want to have happen is great to intermix and to mix um, your cursive and your printing together that way. So here we've got some examples of some printing that you can, you can do and your cursive that you can do. This one is obviously cursive. And uh, again, you can do it with the fine end or you can just uh, come along and practice with the, the large end of the marker also. A fun thing to do as you're trying to learn a cursive is to put a piece of uh, tracing paper over the top of it and actually trace over the top. And it just gives you the feel for what you are, um, what you're doing and it kind of gives you that memory, your muscle memory and such like that. So those are fun. The, um, another fun thing to do with your markers is to create um, little um, signs for if you're doing a party and you want to mark all the, these are all different types of cookies don't they look delicious so again you, as you look at it I would hope that your eye would be trained that you could then realize if you see something that you would like to copy or to do that you go oh this is this is a thick line it's a mono line but so it must have been done with the large end of the writer and then this is a fine thickness of a marker or thickness of a line. So it was done with the fine end of the writer. And again, um, even when you're doing your uh, cursive and such like that, it's nice to be able to um, go up and down. And then that way, again, it's going to look creative rather than crooked. so you can have fun with it that way. Then, another thing that's fun to do is, again, writing with the 
the large end of the of the brighter. Here we're we've got a sign about gifts and cards for a wedding reception or a birthday celebration. And so we're going to take and do our lettering and just have it be fun. You can do it up and down, add some printing, and then continue on. Now because this has a lot of um, blank space on it, it might be fun to be able to um, create a design. So I'm going to add some laurel arcs here and then just some some nice large petals onto it. Then we'll be able to color or paint them in with some of the Gonzai Tombi incredible watercolors that there are. So here we've we've got our part of it all done. So we're going to take our water brush and we're going to take our Gonzai Tombi watercolors and the water brush is incredible that you can load it with water and have it be able to take it anywhere you want with you. So to, to be able to start these I like to just drip about three or four dots into it and then you just simply begin to enliven the ink of the, of the wonderful palette that there is in this Gonsai Tombi. And then you can come back and just be able to paint them in. If you wanted them um, more opaque, well these are very opaque, if you wanted them more watercolor then you could water down and use a, a palette such as um, the palette here where we could take our color get it in there and then water it down a little bit more and then it's going to come into a more of a, a watercolor. You'll be able to see the see how it's a little bit lighter that way. So whatever look you're, you're going for, it's a great opportunity to do that that way. Then you would want to set these aside till they dry so that they have an opportunity to dry. Another fun thing to do with the writer is to do lettering, um, thank you notes, words, um, you know, greeting cards and such like that. So again, as we talk about the names of the person, then that's why it's really nice to be able to um, use that large end because it's going to draw attention to the person's name and then you can just do your lettering. It's funny, some people will say, did you have to grab two markers to do that lettering because you've got a thick line and a small line and that's the secret of the writer is you have the large bullet end and the, and the fine bullet end. And so they're great for all of your journaling, for your bullet journals, for your lettering, for your note taking. Um, and so it's just, Fun. And you can do them sans serif like this, or you could come back and add all the different types of letter endings that you can have fun with. And again, you can you can mix cursive and printing together. So we have the um, the great Kuratake. envelope templates. And this is a, a, a longer type of a, of a template. So what we're going to do is we're going to take and we'll use our Millennium and we went ahead and traced this around the outside. So we've traced it. And that's the great part of a, of a Millennium in that it has a large 
um, a long metal housing that the fiber tip is encased in so as you use it against templates you're not transferring any of the ink to the outside of the template which makes it um, clean up very nicely. So then we're going to take our karatake scissors and we're going to finish cutting out our template. In this case I want to cut just inside that black line so that it's going to cut that off. And I actually could have used the, the fine end of the writer also to create that. So then what's going to happen here is you, you need to have a scoring tool and, you, and a ruler and you'll line up and then you just simply score on the edges there so that it will make it so that you're breaking up the fibers in the paper and then it will fold nicely there and then you can be able to add some of your two-way glue so then it's going to fold very nicely all of the sections and then that would be your finished envelope which we've got one right here all glued together and again we have done this with the, the large end of the writer but then shadow lettering is also always a fun thing to do and here we're going to come back with just a stitched line and we're doing them to the stitch line to the left side of all of the letters here just to be able to create that And then you can use the marker to write the recipients of the of the note on it. And again, just mixing up the different tip sizes. then you can insert it and have your, your letters and borders and doodles all done with the writer. And again, it's double the pleasure, double the fun, double the creativity all in one with a Kuretake Zig writer.